Uh, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this international online discussion on disinformation and harassment national sentiment and direct risk. And thank you for joining us today. I'm glad to meet again with the colleagues from the experts for security and global affairs application from Romania and the Latin speak of international affairs. And let us also warmly welcome Vlada Shibernitsky, a researcher of the Romanian Center for European Policy. She has been working on a project dealing with pandemic-related fake news and propaganda in Moldova and the broad Black Sea region, and has authored several policy briefs on the impact of COVID-19 related disinformation in the Republic of Moldova and its partnership and its influence on the elections in the region. And uh, certainly anti-vaccination sentiments are not a new phenomenon. Let me first of all show a couple of old caricatures. Second, so. Uh, I'm sure you have seen this one from 1802. Uh, depicting Edward Jenner giving the smallpox vaccine to patients who, as a result, get cow like appendages. And the, la the other one, uh, is less known, perhaps. But it shows a cow turned into a monster being fed children by Jenner's associates. You may see now, probably. Um, so, the vaccination act in, in, made smallpox vaccination compulsory in England and Wales in 1853, and. For several decades afterwards, there was an anti-vaccination movement with some, including some riots with the protests reaching the height in the city of Leicester. And there were different arguments, including political, scientific, and religious against vaccination. Some felt the method with using material from cows was unhealthy or unchristian. Like some matter from lower creatures was involved. But in the end, smallpox disappeared by 1977 with the last case registered in Somalia. Um, it was not the only disease which had claimed millions of lives over centuries, but was stopped by science, technology, and importantly, education. Measles is yet another example, and we may remember some other cases, but still, even nowadays, some people find region, uh, reasons for justification of anti-vaccination attitudes, including religious reasons. There was a, I remember, Euro News report in 2013 from Pakistan that some doctors performing polio vaccinations were attacked and even some of them killed, as the local residents in some parts of the country thought that material from pigs had been used to produce the vaccine or that there was a western plot to sterilize the muslims and we'll see that this argument about sterilization is also popular in some other cases as well not only in muslim countries but first uh, i would refer to the recent years opposition to the MMR vaccine, measles, mumps, rubella in some European countries and in the United States, where also some role, partial role could be played by religious reasons, but it started with a false report in the Lancet in 1998, claiming that the vaccine 
this particular MMR vaccine causes autism. Then uh, the journal retracted it, but uh, it remains popular in some conspirological circles, particularly. And in the recent years, we could observe that measles outbreaks happened in many of the EU member countries, in some cases with dozens of fatalities, and also large outbreaks have happened in Georgia, Moldova and Ukraine. And while Armenia has avoided a massive anti-MMR vaccine campaign, which was really marginal, did not play a significant role, the introduction of voluntary use of the Gardasil vaccine against the human papillomavirus HPV led to a spread of conspiracy theories with suggestions that that vaccine is used to control the population numbers as it would allegedly cause sterilization among those getting it. So again, the sterilization argument. And for a short time in 2015, there was also another conspiracy theory running concurrently, also claiming that sterilization could be caused by flour and cereal fortification with folic acid and some minerals. But unlike that, the Gardasil story has been quite persistent as a part of the anti-Western and also more recently, particularly anti-Soros and even anti-governmental propaganda in the last couple of years. And in this larger context, we may also view the arguments against the prospective COVID-19 vaccine. Like in the case of Gardasil, there have been numerous claims that it could be a part of a great plot by the big pharma or by Bill Gates or whoever else planning for global population control or that the government would make Armenia's population a subject for testing, or even that the future vaccine would contain microscopic chips activated by 5G to control people's behavior and so on. And accidentally, such speculations almost stopped a couple of months ago when it was announced that the Russian Sputnik vaccine could soon be available. But uh, yet, I think we are going to have a new surge of the anti-vaccination sentiment soon. We just have to wait and, and see which vaccine may be available for an acquisition by the Armenian government. So, well, this was my introduction and I would like to give the floor to Vlada Shubhernitsky now. Hello, good afternoon, good evening. Um, many thanks for organizing this event. Um, I hope you can hear me well. Is everything okay? Okay. Well, um, I represent the Romanian Center for European Policies. Um, it's a Bucharest based think tank. And um, in the last months, we've been involved in some research projects on what were the main fake narratives related to COVID in the Eastern Partnership regions. And um, we were interested in um, finding similarities and maybe some specific messages that developed um, in uh, in the region and some uh, countries. And of course, anti-vaccination, anti-vaxxer uh, was a very popular topic. Uh, and it was particularly intertwined um, in uh, the conspiracy theories palette, of course, and the uh, pro-Russian propaganda. I will talk a bit about, um, about this. So uh, vaccination, anti-vaccination movement intertwined with conspiracy theories. Uh, basically, anti-vaxxer movement began to warm up the media space from the very outbreak of the pandemic. So they built their narratives on the fake fact that COVID-19 is a hoax. So the logic of the narratives followed, followed this way. Um, there is no COVID-19, there is no need for a, vac for a vaccine, then why do authorities insist on vaccination? And here begins basically the creative flow of disinformation and conspiracies with uh, usually thought-provoking messages. Um, also, uh, the vaccination was intertwined in the now-turned classic trio 5G, Bill Gates, and nanochips. 
It is also integrated with biblical motives and uh, uh, with a mass vaccination. This is how apocalypse begins. And instead of a uh, pandemic, um, some uh, fake platforms um, name, pand um, name pandemic a uh, pandemonia. Um, also, um, uh, in Romania or in Moldova, some uh, web portals that promote conspiracies and fake news believe that if people refuse uh, to vaccinate, then uh, uh, the government will limit citizen rights. Uh, and there begin a set of anti-system messages that citizens will refuse their own basic rights and they will have no access to public institutions. And um, a very uh, important note to make is that anti-vaccination clusters um, and uh, groups be uh, managed to become highly um, engaged with undecided clusters. And here, um, I believe we can uh, relate to, uh, to those people who are hesitant about the vaccine. They are not necessarily against uh, vaccination, but they are having some uh, uncertainties about making the vaccination or not. Um, okay, and the vaccination narratives uh, also were uh, included in pro-Russian propaganda. Uh, basically, Russian vaccine has already been labeled by pro-Kremlin media, of course, as an international hit of medical mar medical market or uh, the new petroleum of our um, of our century. Um, also, it's not it shouldn't be a surprise, and it's not a surprise that in the future Russia will insist on uh, its primacy, superiority, or this superhero nature of providing the first ever registered COVID-19 um, vaccine, and. Um, I would also like to mention some countries in the Eastern Partnership from, uh, from the research we, we have done um, in which of these anti-vaccine narratives were the most uh, visible. Um, it's important to note that many of these recruited local elements to sound more uh, persuasive. So anti-vaccination uh, discourse were promoted basically by shady, obscure websites, but also um, doctors in Armenia um, who also were um, had um, had access to media and they reached um, wide audiences. Um, also, representatives of the church, especially in Moldova, in Ukraine, um, in Ukraine, COVID-19 was considered a punishment for same-sex marriage, for example. And in Georgia, religious leaders uh, claimed that vaccines are demonic inventions uh, meant to enslave people. Um, I would also like to um, share with you some observations about uh, um, about the format of this fake news because they evolved uh, since spring, since the outbreak of the pandemic. So um, first of all, my uh, latest uh, discovery was that fake news writers learned to do journalism. Well, text and narrative styles have changed in time. They became more professional. Uh, it, they sound more engaging and they're more structured. Just it seems like they um, they um, attended a course on how to write arti an article, how to be a good journalist. Um, also, um, this uh, content, these articles, are not promoting conspiracies only or fake news or fiction, but they are promoting half truths. Uh, the content is usually based on a real event which was cited or reflected in a trustworthy media source. However, the author or the outlet gives a subjective and a very creative interpretation or even distorts the information so that it's, it can serve to his uh, thesis or to his conspiracy. Um, also, uh, alternative press versus mainstream press. Uh, that's a very interesting um, label I uh, identified in um, on some um, websites, um, they, well, websites that promote fake news call themselves uh, alternative press. Um, and um, it's always in contrast with the mainstream media, which is serving uh, the government and business interests and uh, basically um, is a decayed one and reached a dead point. So from the point of view of these fake promoters, the alternative press they represent, um, it's a way to build um, a sort of legitimacy. The alternative press is usually inconvenient uh, to the government, and that's why it gets constantly blocked or reported. And um, they, they label themselves as the only media that works for the benefit of the citizens and uh, show presents the truth about, uh, about the pandemic. Um, another interesting behavior, um, I would say um, a survival kit for uh, um, 
for a fake news website or blog is that most of these outlets or blogs um, share, their, share their information on as many platforms as possible. The same documentary, of course, which promotes conspiracies, you can you can find and it's shared on a lot of platforms and they are secured. There is a, a database where people can find it somewhere else if it gets um, if it gets deleted on, uh, on another platform. And uh, also uh, lately, a lot of these um, websites and of course, uh, pro-Kremlin media are contracting experts, pro-Kremlin pro websites, of course, they have good finances for that. So they have a so-called permanent experts. Um, however, these um, fake websites, they're promoting the views of uh, international experts with, of course, uh, very um, dubious or um, uncertain uh, CV. And uh, they also use a lot of surveys to, to attest uh, their uh, information. Okay, thank you. Uh, if you have any questions, I would be more than happy to to elaborate on the subject because it, it uh, indeed there is a lot to to talk about, and I'm looking forward to see to to hear your to your opinions. Armand, can you please turn on your microphone? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we can have a round of questions at the end, I think, and now. Perhaps uh, we may continue with the next presentation. So, Angela, would you like to continue? Uh, thank you, Armen, for organizing uh, the third debate in, in our project. And thank you for, for the invitation. And I would like to also to thank you, Vlada, for, for joining us today. I will continue her, um, her um, thoughts and ideas about the, the Romanian space and Moldo uh, the Republic of Moldova because I have some uh, things to, uh, to add here. Um, I, as I know, uh, Vlad and her colleagues uh, worked a lot on the disinformation uh, issue, and they followed the the subject uh, in uh, online uh, uh, space and, and not only in online space, space. And they organized, I think, field trips into the uh, to the Republic of Moldova. Uh, and uh, spoke with a lot of uh, of uh, experts from uh, from the from the ground, but there are some trends, and um, it, it was interesting how you thought about the the uh, thematic for for this debate, uh, Armen, because uh, I, I found it very very interesting for for us and. Um, I, I was trying to, to think about what are the main problems uh, uh, regarding the vaccination in Moldova and in Romania. First of all, I looked for, for Romania and I found that uh, there are some trends. Uh, uh, and um, the first thing I would like to mention is that the, we have continued to spread misinformation in Romania related to vaccination and uh, uh, COVID-19 through Facebook, Twitter, Telegram, Instagram, or other social media platforms and the websites. Uh, not all, all of them uh, were uh, targeting the, the people. Uh, in order to spread the misinformation, but they targeted, uh, um, they, they had as a name to um, just open the websites and to um, uh, obtain through those clicks on the internet uh, some uh, um, media contracts, media agreements with the with the um, uh, businesses and uh, and so on, uh, but uh, otherwise I will I will stop uh, 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 to talk about the the tools that uh, have been used by the uh, uh, those who were interested to spread the misinformation about the the vaccine, and I will continue with uh, a very short um, introduction about the narratives, the official narratives, and this is important because. Um, as you know, and how, as you mentioned in your in your message, that uh, in Romania we had uh, in the past uh, an anti-vaccine uh, movement, uh, 
uh, and the, this continued almost for, for 10 years. And now the biggest question will be, uh, will Romanian accept the vaccination or not anti-COVID? And this is one of the biggest vulnerabilities uh, for the national security, because um, this is one of the most current topics of debate, but also uh, a topic to communicate to, to the population. Um, we have some experts in the fields, who are experts in public health, and they suggested that um, uh, it will be very difficult for Romania to accept the vaccination uh, because uh, there are some, uh, some studies that uh, confirm these, uh, these ideas uh, that uh, we still have this problem. We still have this problem not only at the level of, uh, um, of the people who are influenced a lot by the public opinion. That means groups of mothers with uh, small children and uh, um, groups uh, of people uh, who are uh, very easy to target. That means uh, religious group and, and uh, so on and so on. But we, we, we still have problems to speak to those people who who are, who are supposed to be educated in the field and to know what are the main results of the uh, research and the studies that have, have, uh, have improved the, uh, our life in the, in the last century. So this is one of the biggest challenge for Romania and it will remain one of the biggest uh, uh, challenge uh, because we will have to organize the communication campaign about uh, the vaccination process. And as you know, Romania uh, is one of the EU countries that will receive the vaccine uh, in the first month of the next, uh, um, next year. So in Romania, the problem is not one, uh, a scientific one, but is, uh, is a social problem. And uh, um, as I mentioned, the, the experts will have to communicate, the public institutions will have to communicate about the distribution of the uh, vaccine, the acceptance of the vaccination among population, and how uh, um, to organize and to prioritize the population uh, that should be uh, vaccinated anti-COVID. Anti um, in this regard, the problems that was reported by, by experts refer more to the infrastructure, uh, to public policies, to acceptance of some uh, initiatives in the, in the field of public uh, uh, policies and uh, main, mainly in the, in the field of uh, uh, health uh, public policies. Uh, and uh, in the past, uh, some of these problems could have been solved if the trust and cooperation among the public institutions and the population have been built by the, by the authorities. Now the level of trust, trust is very low and uh, that's because the, the public authorities avoided uh, communicating with the, with the population about health issues, about health policies, uh, to include them in, into the debates and to organize transparent uh, activities. Uh, that means to uh, invite uh, some uh, uh, categories to, to discuss. Um, we had a lot of uh, uh, false uh, um, information in the uh, social media spreaded by the, not only by the interested group of people to influence the narrative at the, at the national level, but also we have uh, the misinformation campaign was joined by the press, by the press who, that is important in Romania. And uh, one of the examples is that uh, uh, some um, not so popular or some of not uh, so uh, um, doctors that we, 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 we can trust uh, they uh, came in, in front of the of the citizens and uh, spread information about the uh, the vaccination, and uh, this was interesting because the uh, a, a doctor not in the field of. Uh, mm, uh, 
chemistry or biology, uh, but it was an uh, ophthalmologist actually who spread it the, the misinformation about the, the, the vaccination. Also, it was interesting to find out that the, even the Ministry of, um, of the National uh, Defense uh, joined the anti-disinformation campaign because uh, it appeared in the press that some of the uh, activities related to the uh, vaccination campaign will be sustained by the Ministry of, uh, of Defense in, in Romania. And uh, this will be a mandatory um, action for uh, the entire population of, the, uh, of, of Romania. And uh, no one uh, can avoid this, uh, this uh, process. And uh, the misinformation campaign was that uh, organized uh, around the message that uh, the military will impose us to, to uh, uh, to accept the vaccination and also uh, this is this is actually a campaign that is organized with the support of the militaries around the world so um, the minister of foreign uh, the minister of defense came uh, uh, with uh, um, uh, correct information and informed the, the the population about what are the main objectives of the minister of defense and how they can support uh, the vaccination process, and it was only related to the infrastructure in, into support of the organization of the uh, process of the uh, vaccination. Uh, after that, uh, I know for sure that it followed a, a public speech of the president of Romania, in which he mentioned that uh, the vaccination is not mandatory and uh, only uh, some categories will, uh, will be uh, vaccinated uh, uh, for uh, for a good reason, that means uh, doctors, uh, policemen, um, uh, mm, people with difficulties, and, and so on and so on. So no one will be um, um, obliged to, to, to accept the, the vaccination against the, their will. Um, also, it was interesting to, to see how the um, uh, vaccination campaign uh, was um, subject to many debates in Moldova. And uh, I would like to uh, support Vlada's uh, ideas that uh, uh, the um, church was involved from the beginning in spreading misinformation about the, the vaccine uh, vaccination process. Uh, and they, they were against uh, uh, acceptance of the of the vaccination and uh, uh, against uh, accepting the medication uh, and because it was sent by the um, uh, devil to uh, to um, to to test us and to test our beliefs in 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 God. Um, they even uh, came into the um, into front of their um, uh, supporters with many de public declarations, and uh, they were against all the uh, decision taken by the state of uh, emergency commission in the in the public health. Uh, again, um, another um, topic for misinformation in Moldova was the, the subject of the so-called geopolitical vaccination came in from, uh, from Russian Federation, and it was presented uh, even by the president of the Republic of Moldova. He mentioned after uh, the announcement of the Russian experts that uh, he, he trusts this uh, vaccine and he will be among the those people who will accept to, to be vaccinated uh, only uh, to create and to support this build uh, to this uh, trust in the Russian uh, Russian Sputnik uh, uh, vaccine. And this was interesting how people in Moldova reacted to, to this uh, discourse and to this uh, announcement. And uh, I think it's important also to 
to think uh, about the vaccination process, not only uh, from the perspective of COVID-19 um, effects on, on, uh, on society, but also to think about uh, what other category will be affected. And in this regard, we have uh, the children that are mostly affected because the level of trust in the vaccination process is very, very low. And uh, this is a common issue, uh, not only for, for Moldova, but also for Romania. And I, uh, I mentioned at the beginning of my presentation that uh, this was an issue for more than 10 years in, uh, in Romania. And maybe Catalin uh, will, uh, will add something in this regard. The, the last thing that I would like to mention here is that um, I followed a little bit the um, vaccination debate in Ukraine. And uh, I think there are common trends. Uh, the level of trust in, uh, in vaccine is very low, even in Ukraine. But what was interesting to, to find out uh, that in R Ukraine, Russian um, used the, the war in order to spread misinformation related to the anti-COVID uh, vaccination process. And uh, I have as an example, uh, a few cases related to the um, uh, people enrolled in the, in the military uh, from Ukraine and uh, even uh, Chicago uh, uh, press informed about a false report claiming that five Ukrainians um, soldiers uh, had died after taking an American-made coronavirus vaccine spread. Uh, um, and the misinformation or disinformation was uh, spreaded by a small Kremlin uh, website who was, uh, the information was taken from this website and spread it around the, the world by um, a very friendly uh, news agency to, to Kremlin located in, um, in uh, Donbass. And uh, there were a lot of uh, reports after this uh, disinformation campaign related to the uh, American vaccination uh, of uh, Ukrainian soldiers. Um, actually, the Ministry of Defense of, of Ukraine um, came into uh, came and and declared that uh, no one died and uh, no one actually was uh, vaccinated with an American uh, 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 vaccine. So uh, these are the uh, the facts that we should follow in the in the near future because at the beginning of 2021 the vaccination process will start in many European countries. And uh, the debate is very actual, in fact, and uh, we should be very careful on how the communication to the uh, citizen is organized and uh, what is infrastructure we have um, uh, in order to uh, avoid those um, um, propaganda campaign that are built around uh, the anti-vaccine uh, uh, subject. So, Catalina, if you have some uh, things to, to add, please join me and uh, you have the mic. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, thank you very much, Vlada, for your participating today here. Uh, I'd like to ask you to excuse me that uh, after my intervention, I should um, I should quit the, um, the meeting. So um, first of all, I'd like to, to talk a little bit about the anti-vaccine movement in Romania and about uh, its uh, extremely volatile past, uh, especially since until uh, the outbreak of the coronavirus uh, pandemic. So uh, the voices against the vaccine in Romania and also in the Republic of Moldova were um, marginal, but very visible um, until, uh, until now. So in this situation, we must, uh, we must understand that 
all um, all these campaigns base uh, their argument on two uh, social uh, on two social ways. So the first uh, the first it's the so-called scientific argument, uh, extremely unorganic, uh, meant to capture the extremely high uh, educated public um, and the population with. Um, with the with 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 a higher uh, with a higher uh, scientific um, argumentation. So the second direction of argumentation of anti-vaccine movement is the traditional one, uh, the biblical the biblical one, um, based on Christian and neo-Christian uh, argumentation. And to to talk a, a little bit about the pseudo scientific argumentation, I will say that. Uh, the most prominent uh, figure in this movement in Romania and also in the Republic of Moldova, it's Olivia Ster, the wife of uh, an extremely well-known TV uh, director, Andy Moisescu, in, uh, in Romania. So from this position, Olivia Ster uh, benefited from the media infrastructure and needed to spread her, uh, her messages while um, taking advantage of her uh, husband notoriety. So um, in, this, uh, in this case, Olivia Ster uh, distinguished herself by uh, directly challenging the benefits of vaccination and by contradictory discussion with uh, medical specialists, um, especially during uh, TV shows and um, on uh, her uh, personal uh, blog. So another source of, um, uh, of science-based misinformation, it's represented by uh, some websites that are extremely, uh, extremely read by uh, parents in, uh, in Romania and Republic of Moldova. An example of, uh, of this website, it's from informant decision. Um, uh, also, it's a foundation in, uh, in our country, in Romania, uh, uh, managed to use so-called scientific data to, uh, to induce in the public space the idea that vaccination can, uh, can be a real danger for, uh, for our children. So uh, a foundation in our country uh, managed to use so-called scientific data to induce um, to, to, to induce in, uh, the, in, the, in the public space uh, this idea that the vaccination is a real danger or can be uh, I don't know um, 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 a threat to to public um, uh, to public uh, safety. So another well-known foundation among vaccination opponents in Romania it's uh, Lion Mentor. Which it's very, um, uh, it's 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 uh, it's also a website very used by by parents in uh, in Romania. This foundation promotes uh, much more moderate discourses, but it's just as toxic to to the public uh, to the public health. Um, for the um, biblical and Christian uh, argumentation, unfortunately, in Romania, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm saying unfortunately because I'm a, a, a practitioner, a Christian practitioner, uh, certain religious groups have uh, intensely promoted an anti vaccination message and uh, aimed at pre uh, preventing um, uh, all those practitioners from resorting to, uh, to, to prevention. So uh, those, in this sense, a number of priests and monks are good, especially Orthodox, are good that the vaccine is a sin and they um, instead recommended it the holy com uh, only the holy communication, uh, communication. Those, in this regard, um, a number of um, Mm, of um, Orthodox Church uh, leaders um, has intervened in this in this scandal to cl to, to to clarify that uh, that the Church must encourage uh, medical methods to uh, to prevent um, the infections. So, moreover, uh, about the subject, moreover, ultra Christian groups among neo Christian cults uh, vehemently oppose. Uh, um, the idea of uh, of vaccine and vaccination. Um, also, they are uh, they are using. <clears throat> 
so many uh, Facebook and uh, Twitter groups dedicated to them being full of uh, cataclysmic messages to, to Christians who accept the vaccination, including the flu, the flu vaccine. And here it's, um, uh, here it's the problem in, uh, in our society because as you know, um, the Christian Orthodox Church uh, it's sharing um, huge. Um, um, it's sharing a huge rate of um, um, of trust in um, among the the Romanian population, and uh, unfortunately, they are continuing to spread misinformation and fake news about about vaccination. Another example can uh, be um, used uh, by us um, during, uh, during this um, parliamentary campaign in Romania, uh, a political competitor or a political challenger um, used in a very, very um, um, hard uh, the message of uh, the, about um, the misinformation about vaccination and vaccine, and now they are part of. They will be a part of the new of the new parliament, with ten percent um, uh, of the of the Romanian parliament terms. So um, I really think that we, the, um, the civil society, should um, work uh, very hard to uh, stop um, this, uh, um, this flagell because uh, even if we are talking about uh, relation, international relations or about, um, I don't know, uh, global affairs, we should um, realize that our work, um, it's very important in this, in this case because all those movements um, can uh, represent uh, also um, a threat to the um, international uh, to the international system and also for the international uh, uh, public uh, public health. So, if you have questions, I'm I'm here to to answer to you. Thank you very much uh, for for your attention. Uh, thank you very much. Yes, you mentioned, Catalina, you mentioned a very important issue, indeed, that the, the consequences of widespread use of social networks, perhaps these, these were unintended consequences, yet some marginal views, including anti-vaccination, got really widespread globally as a result of these tools being available to anybody because uh, now all people became experts of some sort and also people susceptible to um, conspiracy theories have got more access to such theories and also I just uh, as you also mentioned the uh, so the role of some religious groups. I just got a photo from Ukraine and got it from a colleague on Messenger and maybe I'll show you because it also allows to make some parallels with what we had in Armenia. So, it says no to vaccination and chipping and you renounce God, Jesus, and accept the seal of Antichrist, then you definitely know that you will go to hell forever. So this is called a global conspiracy against God and mankind, and then quotes the constitution that saying no one is obliged to compel with obviously malicious orders. And at the end, it says, individual tax number yesterday, biometric today, chip tomorrow, health forever, refuse, repent and get saved. It, interestingly, this, it uses the individual tax number abbreviation more characteristic for the Russian language. You know, the, there is another Ukrainian official abbreviation, not ENN. But uh, 
the logic is more or less the same we had in Armenia, even though in Armenia the church was not so obviously involved in this, but there was a similar opposition to the introduction of social security numbers and then to biometric documents. So uh, the logic how this develops is more or less the same. Yeah, and with your permission, I'd, I'd like to, to add something uh, very important in this case, because your man mentioned about um, the Russian influence in, um, in this problem. Uh, one of the leaders of the new political party, new political parliamentary party in Romania, um, are promoting the idea that only the, um, uh, the vaccine made by um, US and Germany, so the, um, the Western uh, European countries um, are representing a danger for, um, for, uh, for the population, for the Romanian population. Um, during the, um, uh, or while the, the um, uh, Russian vaccine, should be used by the Romanian authorities in uh, the vaccination campaign, just because the Russians are orthodox and uh, just because the Russians should uh, help um, the orthodox world. So um, this is very dangerous because I, th I really think that Russia will continue to promote uh, and to use this type of messages um, just because um, the Kremlin wants to um, to destabilize the, the situation um, all across uh, the European Union. So I really think that we, the civil society, should uh, challenge and should stop uh, and combat all those misinformation about the um, vaccine, all those vaccines made and created by the Western, uh, by the Western countries. Thank you very much. So thank you too. Uh, let's continue. So Artus, would you like to step in now? If I may, then I will start before Arthur's with small introduction. Okay, sure. And unfortunately, I also have to go because I have one more meeting today. So I will be really fast and clear. So um, while Arthur's is putting the presentation, I guess um, I can uh, start with uh, three main points. Of course, the vaccine is a really controversial topic in Latvia too. And the sur surveys show that only 34% in Latvia society is ready to go and vaccinate themselves. So which is a really low number. And uh, more than 30% don't know what to do right now. And uh, they decide to still wait. Um, um, yesterday, our prime minister announced that uh, now we, our government, will spend more than 254 billion to the health system care uh, to popularize also the vaccine. So it's a new information what we have now and what we will do with that. And um, yes, something similar as Romania, as Angela said, that uh, we, we hope to receive first vaccine in the, in the next year, first month. And uh, our government says that uh, in, um, in the first month, we will have around 20,000 vaccines and uh, more to the match, we'll have now uh, more than 100,000 vaccines. So uh, let's see how it goes. And um, as for the priorities, the government says that the, in a work of, in our country, the first in the first line will be definitely the medics who is working with the COVID-19 patients. And uh, now I will um, Keep going and uh, give a mic to the actors. I hope uh, you will enjoy it. And uh, I, 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 uh, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. I will. Well, uh, you all. Just before you leave, Alexandra, do you know? Uh, so the EU distributed quota for Latvia is already known. How many doses will be delivered? Um, I think they are still. I think I will not know the exact number, but I think it, it should be. Yeah, it should be. Uh, I can look for it and later send to actors uh, or uh, or. Uh... Yes, and, uh, so and uh, do they plan to import more uh, three vaccines? 
to Pfizer, AstraZeneca, and Oxford, uh, or there may be others as well. Sorry, can you repeat it? I, are you just uh, lagging? Do they, that? Uh, do they plan to introduce three vaccines, like uh, the one from AstraZeneca and the Oxford vaccine and uh, the Pfizer, or others may be planned as well? I think it is planned, well, as I see now from the information what we have now here, because also the problem is that we, there is a lot of disinformation. So we really hard to understand what is the right information, what we can compare and understand. So there is only information that the, first of all, it will be vaccinated the medics and uh, that's basically what the government says to us. So we have a really limited information about what we can 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 say. Maybe Arthur's have, have written a bit more about that and maybe you can comment on that but from my perspective what i see now that uh, um i don't want to say on the record that if i may but yeah there is a li really limited amount of information what we can operate on so 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 yeah okay thank you yeah thank you so enjoy yeah uh so with regards to your last question armin uh the thing is, there is indeed, isn't that many information coming, isn't that much information coming from the government with regards uh, of vaccines? Uh, what is almost certainly known is that uh, Latvia seems like isn't planning to import Sputnik V, for instance. Uh, as, for, as for other vaccines, presumably uh, they will import, as you mentioned before, Pfizer, AstraZeneca and by Oxford, you mean Moderna? Is that correct? Uh, so, this is the this is the, the the vaccines that Latvia presumably is going to import. But yet again, uh, there is not that many information with that regards. And I will discuss this as well as uh, disinformation and active vaccination sentiments in Latvia in a minute. But first of all, yet again, I would like to thank you for the invitation. I would like to thank. Uh, uh, all the partners, including this, I would like to thank you. I would like to thank Vlada for her amazing presentation. I'd like to thank Angela and Catalina for amazing presentation. And um, I would want to start uh, now. Uh, um, Armin, can you please uh, turn on the option for sharing the, uh, the screen so that I can share the presentation? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you very much. Give me just one second. Okay. So, so I hope you can see it. Um, so before we start uh, discussing the anti-vaccination disinformation sentiments in Latvia, uh, let me show you this quote from director of the NATO Strat Concord Center of Excellence, Yanis Saats. Uh, which I think is very, very good and showing quite a lot. So he said, uh, it is the last moment to start working against the anti-vaccination disinformation movement. Given the socioeconomic situation and this is this dissatisfaction of the long fight against the spread of COVID-19, this information can already weigh similarly rational people into rational behavior. He basically said it just three weeks ago. Has something changed in light of this regard? I would argue that not too much. Uh, unfortunately, it, it can't be said that, uh, that um, Latvian government uh, and authorities overall um, have communicated well uh, its ideas of how, when, where, vaccination is going to happen uh there is there is not so much information there's a bits of information and usually um uh, there's bits of information coming from journalists just asking questions to the authorities about the vaccination and how it's going to be but i wouldn't say and i wouldn't go as far as to say that the communication was built from a to z that everything is clear and obvious i wouldn't say that Maybe the reason why is that uh, to, to actually not the reason, but two reasons why it's that. First of all, uh, 
a lot of um, attention is putting on, uh, a lot of attention authorities are putting uh, on restrictions. Um, the reason being, of course, that uh, unfortunately, unlike during the spring, we have a significant, uh, significant increase of uh, COVID-19 cases, daily cases, and uh, deaths. That's why uh, some heavy restrictions were implemented um, in last two weeks. So a lot of a lot of um, attention is putting into this one. Second of all, it seems like the vaccination, according to the latest plans, are going to start in February. So I presume maybe uh, government would want to put the most of its um, resources into spreading the information uh, in January or February. Hence, we will wait. But I completely agree with what uh, Mr. Sark said, that it's indeed the last moment to start working against the anti-vaccination disinformation movement because it's already started. And I will provide some of, you, uh, some of the examples. But first of all, the main features of anti-vaccination sentiments in Latvia. Misinformation, disinformation, conspiracy theories about vaccination have existed in Latvian society long before COVID-19 pandemic, which is something I do believe uh, obvious and uh, common not only for Latvia, but for other states as well. Um, however, the first widespread fake news concerning vaccination and COVID-19 appeared already in Maine. Uh, in the infamous film Plandemic, a former American research scientist, Judy Mikowitz, claimed that vaccination against influenza uh, by 36% increases the, risks, the risk of getting COVID-19. This information was quite popular and widespread in Facebook and other social networks uh, in May and um, early summer, but nothing more than that. Um, there was also one uh, one disinformation about the European Union plans to uh, massively and uh, massively vaccinate all the people living in the European Union and making it absolutely obligatory but uh, which is also was fake news but nothing more than that when we're talking about indeed widespread misinformation um, center for the uh, uh, I would say uh, center for the investigative journalism uh, Rebaltica um, concluded that there are more than 20 Latvian pages in Facebook which calls for non-compliance with COVID-19 restrictions. This one actually, uh, that is non-compliance with COVID-19 restriction, uh, is very, very popular sentiment here. Uh, spreads conspiracy theories about viral diseases, vaccination and the like. So, in a way, obviously, misinformation has risen with the first results of COVID-19 vaccines. So obviously, the first results are coming, up, coming in. Hence, it's time to, time to spread, the inform the, spread the true information about the COVID-19's effectiveness and uh, so on. So main, to main talking points uh, are dangerous side effects and effectiveness of these vaccines, as well as, and this is what this one is very interesting uh, for me as a political scientist, attempts to make vaccination mandatory in the context of human rights violations. That is uh, sim uh, quite similar to what we have seen with the COVID-19 restriction that is ob uh, obligatory, you should wear a mask and so on, is seen as if a uh, restriction of freedom which is something that I find quite, quite interesting and not so common. So um, I would go as far as to say that, I wouldn't go as far as to say that uh, Latvia is the uh, land of libertarians and uh, anarcho-capitalists. No, definitely not. Hence, this kind of uh, impressed me because... Uh, there is quite a lot, quite a lot of uh, expected from the government if we ask uh, ordinary folk. But on the other hand, they are not that happy when it comes to restricting their freedoms as well. And I do believe that the research about re about how they how the how the society perceive all these restrictions as well as uh, potential uh, potential vaccination, massive vaccination, as the um, as the human rights violation, as the um, freedom of uh, freedom of doing things and 
and freedom at, at all violation, it's, it seems to me as a very interesting research, potential topic for research. So uh, one, one more thing is that medics and the expert community have encountered trolling and even threats from anti-vaccinists, which is uh, absolutely, absolutely appalling to say the least. And um, something on the other hand, quite common. Uh, so I, I think that we don't talk about this enough and we should uh, put our attention to this to preserve our medics, to preserve our expert community because uh, uh, not only this uh, not only this behavior incentivizes demotivates to working with this issue it also literally threads their lives and so we have to be very cautious with that so here are some examples this one that i already mentioned about the uh, potential vaccination so uh user on facebook is uh, is saying uh, uh, in, in addition to the screenshot that the European Union is plan, plan, planning to uh, massively vaccinate and make it absolutely obligatory for rich and everyone, which is not true at all. Uh, here is another information that uh, it actually was published just uh, four days before that in January and February, uh, vaccination will be obligatory for the police workers uh, which is also not true at all. And uh, here is another information is that uh, spreading, interestingly enough, um, this, uh, uh, this is something that uh, Mr. Robert Kennedy, who is a well-known uh, um, vaccine denier, um, said about about uh, COVID nineteen. So his words already are spreading here as if uh, he's an uh, expert in this question. So so quite common things. What are our recommendations? Um, I would say there's these are four main uh, ones. Uh, first of all, the authorities must must act as soon as possible. Mr. Sartz already pointed out uh, brilliantly and exposing disinformation conspiracy theories. Should also be done in several languages in order to reach as many people as possible. It's, abs it's uh, especially uh, important for Latvia since we have quite significant Russian-speaking minority. But I do believe that it's also quite important, for instance, for Moldova and Romania as well. Um, communication should be coherent and not contradictory. This is uh, absolutely crucial. Because if you don't have this one strong message and uh, authorities all of a sudden uh, start to contradict one another, it will, it will make only hard and not only to reach uh, the people, but also uh, they may lean towards misinformation, disinformation simply because it's way more coherent uh, in spite of absolutely not being true. Uh, the government should spread objective and explanatory information vaccination will be obligatory, how immunity will develop after vaccination, how long antibodies will stay in the, in the system, or if there may, may be any side effects. These are the main topics, obviously. There are quite more, but still, this, this information should be available and uh, authorities started from the prime minister and uh, all, all going down to, 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 your local, to your local medic, you have, you have to have all this information spreading and uh, not being contradictory. This is the most important thing. Decision-making should also involve uh, representatives, apart from medics, obviously, should involve representatives from different scientific fields, including lawyer, anthropologist, psychologist, um, political scientist, and so on and so forth. Those who know how to better organize people and bring knowledge to everyone. Um, this is one of the most important things to to involve as many people from different fields as possible because um, although it's obvious that medics know about the virus way more than communication special specialists, but I do presume that communication spe specialists know a bit more about how to inform people around uh, around the state. So this is the way where this is when, uh, medics uh, com medics uh, cooperate with communication specialists in order to indeed make their work better, to not miss out the opportunity to spread uh, correct information about COVID-19 and uh, vaccines. So that will be it.
Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. So let's have a round of questions. But uh, as far as I know, the you, except uh, Hungary, none of you countries plan to try, give a try to pick B. Is that right? Do you have such information? Excuse me, Amir, can, can you please repeat the question? Seems so, like... As far as I know, by now, Hungary is the only EU member country planning to try Sputnik V. So, is this true? Or maybe some others uh, give it a from, try from, as well. From what, from what I know, Hungary indeed one of these states. But uh, I guess I'm not quite sure right now. I'm not quite sure. But it seems to me like uh, Hungary wasn't the only one. Uh, was it already? Was it also Bulgaria? Uh, I think. Yet again, I'm not quite sure with that regard. So unfortunately, I can't say for a fact. So yeah, by the way, uh, Alexandra sent me this information about um, about uh, vaccines. So uh, Latvia plans to at, at this point, uh, 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 Latvia uh, Latvia will receive twenty seven thousand Moderna vaccines, as well as it plans that uh, roughly about one hundred and thirty thousand of AstraZeneca vaccines as well. So the first phase of vaccination will be limited to some vulnerable groups or some professional groups exposed mostly? Uh, uh, both. Uh, so uh, professional groups that are, uh, some professional groups are indeed also in the risky groups, of course, medics and, and teachers. These are the ones. So they will definitely, as it seems to me, as it seems to me uh, right now, they will receive the vaccination first. please questions or comments um if i may uh armen uh i remember from the beginning when we started our project arthur was very impressed about the role uh, that uh, the church is playing in moldova or romania and uh, uh, i was afraid that uh, um, we will have only bad examples here in the region and you in the baltic states will have the best practices in uh, in uh, um, debunking the disinformation and so on and so on but now i see that you i, I did not take uh, into consideration your minority and this is my mistake because this is a area to spread misinformation uh, among the Baltic uh, Baltic states, and you have a lot of uh, Russian uh, ethnic uh, representatives. So it, it is very difficult indeed for you to organize the communication. And uh, maybe in this case for us it's easier because uh, uh, we have in Moldova. Um, um, people experts who are communicating in both languages russian and, and romania in romania it's there is no need to communicate in russia because all the all the citizens knows uh, uh, romanian language but it's interesting for me to see uh, how this uh, misinformation is coming from from the ethnic minority is, is this uh, uh, really a case to to follow or uh, you have this internal debate as you mentioned uh, from the past uh, from long time uh, uh, used by some interested people to to spread misinformation not only about this anti uh, uh, covid uh, vaccine but also uh, about the other uh, uh, vac vaccination campaigns because here 
those uh, cases that uh, Catalin was mentioning, Olivia, Esther, and other movements, they were spreading misinformation related to the other vaccination campaign that they are causing the autism among the, uh, the, the children and so on and so on. So they are very dangerous for, for the health of the young uh, generation. How is this going in the in Baltic states and mostly in Latvia? Uh, thank you, thank you, Angela, uh, for your questions. Absolutely brilliant and and, and, and on point. At, uh, uh, absolutely on point. So, as to where this information is coming, it depends. Uh, sometimes it's genuine misinformation. So someone is thinking, "Aha! I finally found the clue on how to live better." in a way, yeah, that we should avoid these vaccines at all costs, or we should not wear these masks and follow these restrictions because it will make, uh, it will make our lives easier and so on. And so they will genuinely, with the idea of helping others out, will spread this information. Sometimes it's uh, with malicious intent and usually spread by either marginal politicians uh, marginal in a way that um, they're not mainstream at all, but may have some following, so to speak. Um, sometimes it will be spread by some fake pages in Facebook or WhatsApp. And um, one more thing, uh, talking about where it is spread, WhatsApp is highly underestimated. I mean, we were talking, we are talking about Twitter and Facebook, which is. We have to, yes, obviously, but I don't see WhatsApp being one of the main uh, main means to spread this information. And from my perspective, WhatsApp has to be in in top three and maybe uh, maybe in the first place because it helps to spread this information so fast. The reason being, first of all, uh, older generations uh, use it quite often. It's easy to send these messages to one another, to resent it, to, to forward it to one another. Thus, misinformation spreading very fast. And these groups in WhatsApp are large. They indeed very, very large. So again, it's very easy from Facebook to, to just copy these posts and put it into WhatsApp group and voila. Uh, roughly about, I don't know, 30 or maybe even 100 people will read it and then spread to other friends and these to other friends and so on and so forth. So these chains are huge. And I don't understand why we don't talk about WhatsApp as much as we actually should talk about it. And it's indeed, and on the other hand, it's indeed really hard to prevent it to spreading there. It's, uh, it's, it's very, very hard, actually. So this one have to be mentioned. Um, obviously, some information comes from the Russian media uh, close to Kremlin and uh, uh, fake news as well. So there, there are, I would say, three main sources. And again, um, society as well, just uh, spreading this information um, uh, to one another. As for differences between uh, communities, uh, that is Latvian speaking community and Russian speaking community. I wouldn't go. I wouldn't go as far as to say that there is very different approaches working here. Actually, no. I would say that uh, amongst both Latvian speaking and both Russian speaking communities, this information spreads quite in the same way. So one friend telling to to another, same WhatsApp groups, same Facebook pages, same media. Maybe Latvian speaking, not, not, not everyone who is Latvian speaking is able to understand uh, Leo Tolstoy in original language, yeah? Uh, they, will, they may have uh, some, some problems and issues, but understanding these simple messages in, Russians, in Russian will cost them no problem at all. And the older person is, the easier for him to read it, or for her. So... I would say that I would even go as far as to say that almost every everyone who is older than forty years old, uh, maybe even thirty years old, knows Russian quite well in order to to read it, to read this information in Russia 
in Russia and then spread it and uh, say to each and everyone that, yeah, you see, a vaccine's actually not that effective. Plus, uh, what is one more important thing is the rabbit hole of disinformation, which I find also quite fascinating and dangerous uh, <laughs> uh, sim simultaneously. What do I mean by that? So, for instance, you have a politician who is completely against COVID-19 restrictions or any public person in general. So when he starts to say that he's against COVID-19 restrictions, you're kind of following, oh, yeah, you see, yes, indeed, I completely agree with him with that. Suddenly, you may find yourself in a rabbit hole, which leads to anti-vaccination which leads to which leads to other conspiracy theories and so on and so forth. So it's really easy to find yourself in this in this rabbit hole. Hence, uh, this yet another way how to not to spread information, but rather find yourself in a situation when you completely agree with those who deny not only the virus but the vaccine's ef efficiency at all. That denies that uh, denies the science. Uh, claims that the uh, earth is flat and so on. It's actually quite, quite easy to find yourself in this rabbit hole as well. So very, very different way, ways to find, find yourself in a situation when you deny the efficiency of um, vaccination. That's how I put it. Uh, thank you very much, Arthur. Yes, uh, about uh, WhatsApp, I agree, and perhaps increasing the telegram as well may play the same role and for the elderly people indeed it's easier to get involved in some groups on those media because everybody has a phone and uh, whatsapp or telegram or viber they are connected to phone numbers so everybody with a smartphone has access because many elderly people would not bother about twitter for example especially or on facebook a lot of people would just get amazed with some somebody's photos or cat pictures or whatever but some social media which only need an access to phone are more effective to get people involved Um, I would like to ask a question, if I may. Uh, of course. Yeah, that's for Arthur's, uh, because uh, the Baltic states, we haven't researched yet uh, about what's going on um, in this disinformation campaign. Uh, I'm curious whether uh, in Latvia there is uh, any anti-fake news legislation and how the government is responding to it. Sorry, thank you. Thank you for your question. Uh, thank you very much, actually, for your question. Yes, we do have. Not only that, not only that, we were we were actually we had uh, quite prominent cases of uh, one particular person who was jailed for, uh, but not for COVID nineteen uh, misinformation, but rather fake news that he was spreading. Uh, it was before the pandemic. So it's not that we don't have any responsibility for, uh, for, for, for fake news or, or something like that. No, we do have. Uh, but again, as to whether uh, the question lies uh, on how to defer genuine misinformation and disinformation, in fact, and fake news spreading. So you have to indeed be very, very careful with this legislation. And not only that, as I said before, quite a lot of uh, current uh, attention is pointed to uh, restrictions. This caused the main uh, uh, debates uh, and uh, discussions, not only in social networks, but also uh, on television, in media, and everywhere, and everywhere else, and this has to be uh, where the discussion is going on right now. But there is no, not that much of a disinformation, I would say, a rather misinformation, but also very, uh, I would say, very genuine and um, 
um, lighthearted in a degree so that, uh, for instance, oh, you heard that now we can do this, this and that. But the, when you find out that, well, actually you can do this or vice versa, that you can do this, this and this, but in reality, you can do that. So it's in a way lighthearted because it's quite easy to debunk and uh, usually no one wants to risk it apart from yet again some marginal people but i do believe every society has this kind of people that will not obey to any law and any restriction regardless of the situation in the state so they will not wear they will they will uh, they will i don't know go to the shop without any mask whatsoever they won't follow any quarantine whatsoever and uh, they will deny everything that they possibly can in order to, I don't know, for, for, for what reason, maybe just to show off. Uh, you never know for, for a fact and for sure. So yeah, this is how I would answer your question. Thank you, Vlada, very much. Thank you, too. And I also like to thank you for your recommendations you drafted for uh, um, better communication on the uh, vaccination campaign. And actually, I also prepared some uh, um, recommendations, if I may, uh, if I may say them, okay. Um, well, um, I agree totally with the fact that there should be um, an integrated uh, unitary communication approach between authorities and maybe some um, companies, some very popular companies in, uh, in the country to promote uh, uh, the vaccination. Uh, with regards to companies, I would refer maybe to the CSR um, initiatives within the companies, not necessarily to um, oblige people to vaccinate, but rather to inform and raise awareness between, uh, between the employers and the employees. And um, I also believe that uh, this subject of anti-vaccination, um, sorry, uh, it should be covered and promoted by creative industries. I think they can find a very interesting key to um, to some certain categories of population. And you never know, I mean, it could, uh, um, it could re register some very important um, creative messages in the history of, let's say, uh, creative industries, marketing and advertising. Um, I would say it's very important to grant more visibility and appreciation to fact-checking initiatives. Uh, there are well-known uh, permanent or temporary initiatives, and this should be um, promoted, shared, and um, uh, also, they should become as important as well repute as famous media outlets. Um, okay, and the check and fact checking platforms and the sources and the information we read, uh, this should become part of our media hygiene. It is time consuming indeed, but unfortunately, if we want to, to have a healthy society, we should uh, begin, at, we should start at least with this little, little step just to uh, check the information. And uh, uh, last but not the least, uh, the communication should be based on trust building and storytelling. And by storytelling, uh, I mean uh, um, involving public figures and influencers for promoting basic hygiene rules like washing hands, uh, wearing a mask up to the benefits of, uh, of vaccination. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Angela Arthurs, do you know if uh, in which EU countries there is all, already pre-registration for vaccination? I know in Hungary, they in one day, about 100,000 people registered because Viktor Orban told that uh, everyone having public medical insurance can already get registered. Uh, so they suppose they would have enough doses already in January or February to vaccinate all the population twice. Um, as for your question, uh, Armin, thank you. Uh, the only state, uh, uh, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, the only state that to register vaccination to use was the, the Great Britain, which is uh, in, in just one, uh, in less than four weeks, uh, and not only <laughs> will not become uh, uh, the European uh, Union state anymore uh, in a very, very formal way. Uh, so this is the only state. 
I guess that uh, I'm not. I'm not guessing. I'm. I, it's from from what from what I understand. Uh, most of the cases, states are waiting for a final uh, third phase of cl clinical um, um, research to end, so that they can uh, be sure that everything is fine. They can register the 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 vaccine and use it. I think the same is for Romania. I mean, we will wait for until the uh, clinical text will uh, will end, and uh, we will have the the best conclusions. I know for sure that Romania will have access to six type of uh, anti COVID vaccine, uh, due to the fact that we are member states of the European Union. And also, I saw on uh, social media that some of uh, well known private clinics in in Romania are organizing uh, surveys online. Uh, in order to find out if people uh, would like to um, be part of this uh, vaccination campaign. And after you will register on their website, you will be informed about the uh, coming uh, um, uh, steps for, for vaccination, if the, the clinic will, will have access to, to those uh, dose of, uh, of vaccine, anti-COVID vaccine. So this is the procedure now in Romania. We will start with the medics, with the policemen, with the teachers in schools. After that, we'll go um, uh, elder uh, people and uh, those who are social vulnerable and only after that will will come the will follow the the people uh, in in a good uh, health but now only the private clinics are organizing the surveys and, and there is no uh, procedure open to to register for the uh, vaccination campaign uh, Sanjali, you mentioned six vaccines could be possibly used in the EU. I, uh, I'm just checking this. There was in the, this article a few days ago on the 27th of November on Deutsche Welle that in addition to larger numbers of doses supplied by AstraZeneca or Moderna, there could also be Sanofi, Glaxo, Smith, Klein vaccine, and Johnson Johnson and Kovac. So probably these six. Uh, I have found uh, during uh, um, preparation for this debate a uh, very useful web page. Uh, it's in Romania, unfortunately, but uh, maybe you can use Google Translate. And uh, this is a very good initiative because it's a government initiative and all the information related to, to uh, vaccine can be found here. That means the uh, vaccination campaign in, in Romania. So you can see the misinformation, what are the most uh, used uh, misinformation in, in, in order to spread the disinformation about the vaccination campaign. What are the, uh, uh, what is the legal, European legal framework? Uh, what access will have Romania to, to the vaccination campaign? Uh, what, are the, uh, what are the results of the uh, research? Uh, what are the main companies that are providing the, those, uh, those research. So all the information is on this uh, website. Unfortunately, it was uh, launched um, only a few weeks ago. So um, the communication was not well organized during the pandemic by the authorities. Uh, and uh, the, the, the level of trust in the authorities is very low. And uh, as a recommendation uh, to what Arthur mentioned uh, prior to this, he, he, for Romania, it will be to, to invite experts, to invite uh, experts in public health to speak to the people and to translate to the people what are the, the steps uh, with the vaccination campaign uh, and not to allow uh, only the uh, public authorities or decision makers to, to speak to, to citizens. Thank you. Other questions or comments? 
I have one uh, argument to, to Vlada. Uh, I find it very interesting. Um, you mentioned about that, about journalists, that they are not journalists, but those who are writing these fake news, that they are becoming better. Uh, how do you find out this? Okay. Uh, thank you, Arthur, for this question. Uh, well, I made the research and uh, I started my research actually on um, um, in the springtime and I just compared it, the text from, let's say, April, May to what's going on in uh, in October, November, let's say so. And, um, well, I studied journalism, for example, and I can recognize this, this structure, the basic structure, and it just... Uh, these days when I was reading these um, fresh articles um, on these fake websites, I was uh, a bit shocked. Look, it, it sounds way too real. It sounds way too, um, I don't know, way too convincing. And uh, yeah, that's how, uh, that's how you find it out. And also they just use arguments uh, very, um, I don't know, very well prepared and explained. It's something really, it, it's becoming uh, harder uh, to, to combat them and to find them. What are these, um, and it's just a surviving kit they, they, that they developed uh, during this pandemic. And it's important to um, never to stop uh, actually uh, checking these uh, websites because they're evolving. And uh, if you maybe make a pause for a month Next month, you can wake up just having uh, uh, this website recommended as something uh, uh, reliable. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's an evolving uh, industry, I would say, unfortunately. Thank you, Vlada. You're welcome. So, if there are no more questions, perhaps we may wrap up, but I would just uh, say that you know, hopefully we, as part of civil society, we can also contribute to convincing people that trust in science and technology is good because we can remember that while some diseases have been dealt with effectively with hygiene and clean water, clean water antibiotics, especially the respiratory diseases, smallpox, measles, or whooping cough, or diphtheria, even though the latter is caused by bacteria, not by a virus, have been most effectively dealt with by vaccinations so far. And so, as another respiratory disease we are dealing with now, COVID may also be most effectively or rather prevented by vaccination as uh, the cure is not exactly working against it but against pneumonia it causes and uh, some it, and in any case it uh, causes unnecessary large burden on the health healthcare system and uh, still many people do not survive it so Let's hope in the, the next few months we can see a change of the situation in this regard. And thank you very much indeed for your valuable contributions and uh, I'll see you next time. Thank and, you, Armin. Thank you. And let me thank, thank uh, those who joined us online. So I'm sure you are a great audience, even though I cannot see you personally at this moment thank you have a nice evening goodbye thank you thank you bye bye